Hey everybody, I have something really fun to show you today and that I'm calling this an announcement box and I've seen other people do very similar things and they call it announcement boxes. And so essentially, let's look at this page and see what this interaction is. So this is a regular page. You might've seen this on some of my other tutorials, how to do a minimalist home page. And so the element that I added here was this announcement box right to the right. And you can scroll through the content it doesn't take up very much space, it's just on the side. I can scroll down and get more content, so that way I can hide some of it so it doesn't clutter up too much of the page, but there's still some good stuff in there. And I have some space around it, it floats to the right. Let me show you exactly how I did this. And I copied the code here at the bottom of the page. It's very simple code, this might look a little bit complex, but when you really analyze it, it's pretty simple code. So. Let's take a look at how I got this box from the code that is right here. So first of all, I have a div. The div starts here and it ends at the bottom. So everything is part of this div. And I have some classes here. Class is img-rounded, border, border-trbl, which is top right, bottom left, and border round. You've probably seen this code in a few other interactions that I've created over you know, the past tutorials. And essentially I want there to be a distinguished border around this div and I want the corners to be a little bit rounded. So I just copy and paste this code right in there. And then I put in some style. Style is internal CSS. And so this is the design aspects of the interaction that I have here. And so the design aspects that I have are, I want it to float to the right. So technically this code appears before this body of text, right before it, but I have it floating to the right which means it's floating to the right of every other element, which would be this text and these buttons right here. I want it to just float over to the right. The background color, that would be the background color of this text right here. And in order to get that color, I actually got a bunch of colors all from this image that I have up top here. So I have a color picker. And so I just scrolled around the page and I looked for the hex color, the hex code for different colors that are on this screen. And so I just chose some colors that I thought would be good for this interaction. So I wanted the body of the announcement box to be, you know, something light with dark text on it. I wanted the top to be dark with light text. And so this color right here is the color of the main body background. I put a width and the width is 350 pixels, which is the width right here. So 350 pixels wide. If I had doubled that to 630, then this would be twice as wide. And that might work for you for some interactions. Maybe you want a really wide announcement box. For me, I just wanted something something a little bit small. And so the height is 260 pixels tall. So 315 wide, 260 tall. And you can make those whatever dimensions you feel like. Now you notice I have margin left is 50 pixels. I just want some space in between the, these words and all of these elements and the side of the box. I don't want the words or the buttons to go right up against the side. And you might think 50 pixels is too much. Maybe 25 pixels would be better. It's really just up to you. And then I have that border. Remember in the class, I defined some properties for the border. Here's where I actually put the specifications for the border. So it's a one pixel border and it's a solid line as opposed to something that's dashed or dotted. And then I picked another color that was something I found on the image above here. So I wanted something a little bit darker than the background color of this main text area, but I didn't want black. I actually had black on here and I thought that really stood out and I wanted it to be a little bit more seamless. And so this is the basic code and then I get into my heading and the paragraph. So the heading is an H3 and then I have the style. The color is just F and that, so that means white. This is white text on a dark background. And the dark background, again, I picked out a background color from somewhere on this picture that I thought looked okay. And then I center aligned the text as opposed to left or right. And I put a little bit of padding, just five pixels of padding. And that gives me a little bit of space between the words and the top and the bottom of this box. So the div element where the actual content lies, that's a little bit more sophisticated, but it's not too complex. So we have a div, and so all of this right here, from the beginning of the div to the end div tag, that's all of this content right here. And so I put a height of 200 pixels tall, and overflow x means hidden, so that means there's nothing going off to the right or the left, the x-axis. However, overflow dash y 
is set to auto. So if I have more content, then I can scroll down. I don't want to scroll left to right because that's too cumbersome, but scrolling up and down, that's, that's what I enabled. So I put auto right there and then I put some padding. So I put six pixels from the top and the bottom, and then I put 15 pixels from the left and the right. If you wanted, you could put six pixels all around if you want. You can just figure out these values, what you think looks good on your page. And then the text align would be to the left. These next few elements are simply the text. So I have a paragraph, then I have another paragraph, and then I have an image. This is just an image that I found in my course images. And so I wanted to put that in there. And then I go ahead and close out the div. And that's closing out this div right here, which is the content of the box. And then I close out the, the big div, which is the entire interaction right here. And so obviously you can go and change whichever properties that you want. You're definitely going to want to put your own text and images in there. And you don't have to have an image either. And it doesn't have to be a lot of text. It could be a short little did you know box. I do recommend, unless it's just one short paragraph, that you'll probably want to enable this y-axis to auto overflow. And that way the students can just scroll down. And last thing I'll point out, if you wanted to put a shadow, I have another tutorial where I talk about putting shadows behind elements. And so you can do, you can put a shadow like this, or maybe an offset drop shadow, or maybe something a little bit bigger. I think this one's my favorite. It's just the shadow at the very bottom. And I think it's very subtle and very classy. That's probably my favorite shadow for this particular interaction. Or you could do something pretty extreme. And you can put multiple shadows of various colors and really make it pop out on the screen. It's pretty hard not to look at that announcement box. I'll be perfectly honest. So anyway, that's the extent of my tutorial today. We're talking about the anatomy of how to create an announcement box. And I know I covered some of this stuff in previous tutorials. So if there's something that kind of caught your interest that I skimmed over today, then go ahead and browse this channel or visit the website howtocanvas.com to grab those other tutorials. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel to see upcoming videos and visit us on our social media. If you have ideas for applications of this interaction or if you have ideas for other things that you'd like me to explore, then please leave a comment in the chat below. And I will see you next time. Happy Disney morning! <laughs>